is the brand new Range Rover Sport. And he's a pretty handsome chap, isn't he? And he always has been. So it's good to see Land Rover has kept the design so good. I mean, it's a lot more sleeker and it's very classy as well. So come with me as I review the brand new Range Rover Sport. There are a few problems though, and that starts with the price. See, the Range Rover Sport starts at a staggering £80,820. This model here, which is the D350, and it's the first edition, is £106,000. Brand new, you're paying over hundred grand for a Range Rover Sport. Don't know what the world is coming to. Anyway, this is the D350, so it's got a three litre V6 diesel. 350 horsepower, 516 foot-pounds of torque, not to 60 in 5.6 seconds, and a top speed of 145 mile an hour. Now, given the size of the car, that's pretty impressive figures. One thing I've just noticed, looking into the engine bay here, I mean, when this was built, I think an apprentice might have finished this off, because the engine strut brace is so poorly designed or poorly finished. If I was the owner of this car, I'd be a bit embarrassed. One more problem is, yes, there's no electric option, which, I mean, for me, you would have thought Range Rover would at least put a new electric motor in there to sell or to even market it. But no, the only thing you can get is a plug-in hybrid. Now, when I mentioned sleekness before, that's really apparent when you see how the bodywork kind of matches or blends in with, with the window. They kind of ditched the window sills, which looks really good. Now, when you compare the Range Rover Sport with this big brother, or the new Range Rover, the wheelbase is actually identical, which means you get a load of space in the rear. Load of legroom, headspace is good, and looking thing I've just noticed with the here, now you get forged carbon inlay on, on the doors here. Now, this comes standard with the D350 first edition model. However, that is an optional extra on any other Range Rover Sport. It's about 1,400 pounds, but I'd recommend it. It looks great. Now, coming down here, you've got the armrest with the hidden cup holders. Here, you've got the heated and cool seats in the rear, and you've also got full zone climb control. So the passenger next to me can have his uh, or hers temperature set different to what I have. And looking at the bottom here, you've got two USB-C sockets and a 12 volt socket. So the seats in the rear of the Sport has power recline, so I can go back for a long journey and also bring them back up. It's got panoramic sunroof, so it feels nice and fresh inside. Now, one thing with the, with the, with the new Sport, you can only get five seats. If you want seven, you must pay for its bigger brother. So as I'm sat in the front of the Range Rover Sport, one thing that hits me is the new 13-inch infotainment system. The other thing here is the new, well, clear view mirror, which uh, Range Rover call it. As you can see there, it's a camera on the rear view mirror. Now, this is the first time I've ever experienced this. It's quite a cool feature, and I do prefer it just over the mirror. But you've got nice first edition engraved center console thing here. Nice deep, well, very deep storage there. And one thing which oof, I don't think, I don't know why they've done it, the USB socket is here. So when you plug it in and you bring it out and you want to put a drink in, so it traps the wire. But if you don't want to use the wire, that's absolutely fine. There's a wireless charging port there, which is nice and grippy so your phone cannot slip off. Now, if you're a smoker or you want to use the 12 volt socket, now it is, not in there, in the top bit there. I mean, it's a bit of a weird place to put it. I mean, who would put it there? I mean, a few of you haven't been able to find where it is, but it's there. Now the digital driver's virtual cockpit <clears throat> is well nice and displayed. It kind of just floats above the dash here. Now, one thing that's cool on here, if I get the, the map up, it's like Google Maps. How it works is very, very cool. You zoom out. It's a bit laggy and it does take a bit of time to load up, but yeah, it's a pretty good system. Now the seats are really comfortable. You really do sink into them. Now, one cool fact about the new Range of Sport is you can spec environmentally friendly upholstery into the seats. But I think at the end of the day, you've got a Range Rover, 
you're going to go for the leather. Sorry, Greta. So onto the rear of the new Range Rover Sport, you've got twin shark fins there. One of them has the camera integrated for the clear view rear mirror. These lovely rear lights are nice and small, and it goes all the way to the other side with a nice black strip. But I think for me, if I was having a Sport, I think I'd have the black because this would camouflage really nicely and probably a little bit better with the black. See, the, the number plate has been relocated lower down, whereas the old Sport was more in the middle. And as you can see on the bottom here, there are two cutouts for the P530 model, which has the quad tailpipes, which look better. So returning to your Range Rover Sport is an event. So as I unlock the car here, as you can see, the lights light up in a nice swoosh motion, which is a nice feature. Now, as I open the boot, as you can see, the car is actually in its highest position. But that's not a problem because as you can see now, it's now coming down. Right, now it's at a more accessible position. So as you can see here, there's a little storage bin thing, which I don't know what you're gonna use it for. Bring this back down. And one of the, probably the funnest features on the Range Rover Sport is when you have a breakdown or flat tire and you have to put your spare wheel on, everyone will know because you're gonna look like a clown. And I don't know what's happened there. So if you bring in any long items into the rear of the boot, just press these two buttons and the rear seats fold down automatically. You've got a nice belt strap here, so nothing falls out. Some hooks for your bags there and a nice little net in storage there. So one feature which has been derived from the Range Rover Velar are these pop-out door handles. So when I go and press unlock here, pops out for me. And by the way, the doors are really heavy. Anyway, let's get out on the road. Okay, so just before we go, bring my armrest down because it's so much comfortable having one of them. And it's a very cold day today, four degrees outside in fact. And we're gonna put the seat heaters on. Do much prefer having a dial rather than all this digital stuff. It's just much easier to use. Right, gear stick, nice and fat in the hand. Front the brake, into drive, let's go. Now, immediately after you drive it, over five mile an hour, you instantly get hit with all the handles coming in. And it's a bit of an annoying sound, but there's nothing you can do about it. Now, when we say sport, let's be honest, it is just a Range Rover with a sport badge on it. But the suspension is more firmer than its big brother, and the ride is more forgiven when you're comparing it to, to a Porsche Cayenne or BMW X5, for instance. It really does soak up the bumps really well considering it's on 23 inch alloys. And that's one thing I didn't mention before now because this is the first edition and it's got pretty much everything specced from factory. It's got the 23 inch. Now, when you're specking your new Range Rover Sport, if you wanna go down the comfort route, not a problem. I'd recommend you to choose the 20 inch alloys over the 22s or 23s. It's just gonna soak up the bumps a lot better than the bigger size ones. But say for instance, you wanna go down the route of specking your new sport to handle better and be really, really good on the roads or in the bends, then you must either go for any of the plug-in hybrids or the P530. Now, the P530 or any of the plug-in hybrids they come with four-wheel steering as standard, which will get you out of the bends much easier. And also, if you do a lot of city driving, the four-wheel steering is just a lot more easier to live with when doing those tight bends or manoeuvres. But to be fair, as I'm giving it a little bit through these corners here, I'm actually really, really surprised with how well it's handling. I mean, I will say, you know, the diesel, is it the right engine? I don't know, it, it's there, but when I, when I do put my foot down, it's like, the gearbox is too sluggish, it's not responsive enough for me. Mm, goes well, don't get me wrong, but 
give me the P530, the BMW V8. Now, let's not forget, this is a Land Rover, so it must be good off-road, and it's got all the gear to do so. So it's fitted with a low ratio gearbox, and in its highest setting, it has 281 millimeters of, of ground clearance, which is better than any of its rivals. Now, one technology feature in the Sport, in the new Sport, which I find really impressive is the new ASL, which is the automatic speed limiter. So it uses all its cameras to scan all the speed limits uh, wherever you're going through. So for instance here, we're coming up to a 30 mile an hour zone. The car will then drop the speed down and therefore you can drive without basically thinking what the speed limit is. Just let the car do all the work. You don't have to brake. Just gone up to a 30 and it's automatically braking for me and we've even just gone into a 20 now. So the car is now brake for me and I'm now doing 20 miles an hour. And therefore, if I put my foot down, I cannot go any faster because the car will not, will not let me do so. Obviously, I can override this like you do with a normal speed limiter. Going around town like I am here, it's got a silky smooth gearbox, you know, it does put you through the gears really really nice now one cool thing that the new range of sport has is the 3d on-road cameras now it says here camera not recommended above 20 mile 25 mile an hour but let's see how fast we can do with the cameras in use there's 55 and there's 60. bit of a gimmick but it's quite cool and that'll be really really useful when going into a, uh, a parking space. Now, one thing I've just picked up on, I didn't pick up on it before because the car wasn't moving, but this clear view mirror, it, it's really hard to concentrate on whether you're looking in the actual mirror or the camera. I, uh, I'm wearing the sun glazes now, I cannot see anything that the camera is portraying. It's, it's, it's weird. So for me, that's going off. Give me normal view. That's a bit better. So in conclusion, firstly, it is a marked improvement over its predecessor. Much, much better. For me, my opinion, I'd have the black. Would I recommend you buying one? Yes, I would. And I'd recommend you buying one over the Range Rover because I can't seem to find a reason why you'd go for the Range Rover 20 grand more over the Sport. That's if you've got a family of seven, of course, but you know, Range Rovers are holding on to the value very well these days. And this now, well, yes, 106,000 pounds new, but you could easily make over 20 grand on it now. So for me, win-win situation, get yourself a Range Rover Sport. So I'm gonna enjoy this Range Rover for the rest of the day. Thanks for watching, give it a like and uh, subscribe and uh, we'll see you soon. Season two is coming, don't you worry.